Hello, this is Professor Heath Van Horn, and this is a video on the Wireshark Lab. Wireshark is a tool used to monitor the packet uh, information that is being transmitted from your computer to the rest of the world. Uh, it is a free, open source tool. It is very powerful. It is used by all kinds of um, government officials, network administrators, and hackers. So I'm gonna, just going to walk you through on the basics of using Wireshark, and um, let's get started. So to start Wireshark, you just uh, there is a link on Venko Hall about how to install Wireshark on your Windows PC. This is all for the computer lab, so you can skip once you install it. You can skip the lab all the way up to page five. So once you get that installed according to the link it was a great walkthrough so I didn't make another walkthrough um, you can click here to access the one that is getting information you can see I have lots of different ports on this PC that I'm using uh, right now I'm just using Wi-Fi because my other cable is being used for something else and so you can look at all these different um, Let's open this one up. And you can look at all the different packets that are being sent by your computer to other uh, websites. And all this stuff is advertising uh, what you are doing in um, the world. And so our first step is to go to CNN.com. And we put that in there. I like CNN.com because it has so many ads that it just drives Packet Tracer insane. I'm sorry, it drives uh, uh, Wireshark. Look at all this stuff. We got blockages. Yeah, it's just, it's a good site to look at many different packets. All right, so we stopped that. So we went from 900 packets to 6,000 packets in what, eight seconds? So there's a lot of crap that CNN puts out there. Anyway, um, and a lot of it has to do with they use third parties for a lot of their information. And so each one of these is going to yet another website, which is going to yet another website, which is going to yet another website. So you can see a lot of different types of websites just from when we started clicking on, which was around 900. Yeah, that's about, yeah. That's CNN there. Okay, so you can see a lot of different websites. And when you look, it's like, hey, take a look at some of these packets that you see. So you've been reading about ARP. You've been reading about TCP, UDP, that's videos or live feeds. So you can see all these different kinds of packets out there that you've been reading about. And now here's your chance to actually see them and what they are doing. And I'm not going to click on all these because it would take us forever to um, get through all the garbage that CNN puts out. But uh, it's just most of this is advertising and cookie tracker and, and boy, they really like watching everything you do. So when you do this, uh, you can see all these different types of packets that you've been reading about and you can click on them. And you can see the different information by clicking down here. This is what the actual hex code looks like for each packet. Um, so this, so when you translate this into ones and zeros, that is exactly what is being sent to your NIC card across the internet. So we got, here's a rough idea of what the packet is. Here's the English FIED version of the data. And then here is the actual ones and zeros represented in a uh, numerical form that we can interpret. This is hex. So that way the numbers go from 0 to 16. All right. So uh, this gives us a lot of information. So let's go to a website that's not so busy. Um, so that way we can actually focus on some of these. some of these individual packets. So let's open up uh, Firefox again. 
And so we got that. So all these are a bunch of things. And I don't know, Firefox isn't nearly as bad as Chrome, but um, there's still a lot of garbage in there that we really don't need to see. And so what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to a known site that doesn't have any security on it. So please do not click on much in there. It's kind of neat because they have a lot of products. But do not click on much and certainly don't buy anything from this website, okay? So let's go to this website and watch it pop up on Wireshark. And we're at packet, you know, 1,000 and change. And once we go to this website, woo, it, it's going to blow up. So it's a lot like CNN, except here we know what everything is. And you can see most of the traffic is uh, TCP. So once that settles down a little bit, yeah, that should do it. Um, we're going to stop collecting data. Yeah, that's, that's good. And then we're going to close this website because I don't want them... Uh, doing anything more than what we already know that they do. Okay. So we have 5,000 packets collected. And so from the packets, um, we can look at just the HTTP traffic. Uh, don't worry about the colors. The colors don't mean, they, they have no intrinsic value. Green doesn't mean good. Red doesn't mean bad. Uh, blue doesn't mean neutral. I mean, they're just colors that help you go, oh, it's that kind of a packet. Oh, it's that kind of a packet. These are dying packets. But the thing is, is don't get too caught about what the colors mean because you can go to tools and change the color schema. So um, so don't, don't try to go, oh, that must be bad. They must be hacking me. No, it's not true. Um, the information inside the packets is what you're interested in. So if we want to only see HTTP, we type in HTTP at the top, and we see uh, a, what it says. It says, look for the first HTTP packet labeled with get. So there's our get right there. And that is not the right packet. Oh, because we started at about 1,000, right? So here's our first. So these packets here are um, when Wireshark first opened, it was trying to get to different ports. We're looking for this get right here. 1113, that's when we opened up uh, the website to ARNGREN.net. Argren. And so we click on that packet. Okay. And when we look at that, we say, hey, what is the answer to deliverable number one? So that question is, what is the destination IP address? So our destination IP address is where it says destination, 98.137.244.30. Our source address is us. So that should be us there. If you don't know your own IP address, um, you know how to find it. But now we only want to see packets that are delivered to that IP address. So you just right click on there and you say, uh, apply as a filter, um, select it. Okay? So anything that IP destination of that address is the only thing that's showing up now. You see how we've cleaned up these packets. Um, if you look at here, there's a lot of missing numbers. This is the sequence of the numbers of the packets that arrived at your uh, NIC card. So all we're seeing is things that are going to that IP address. So uh, we want to find, uh, the next step is to find the TCP SYN packet. And there's our it's number one, TCP SYN synchronization packet. And it says, hey, look at the middle pane. Again, you're not going to look at the hex code. That is not important to you, what you guys are doing. So we're looking at the middle one. And the middle one says that uh, we are going to look at the details. And we want to look at Ethernet 2 details. So there's Ethernet 2. And it says we need to answer questions 2 and 3. It says, what is the gateway address? What is the source address? All right, so we have a destination. And we have a source. Uh, in 
this particular, I think it's because I'm using wireless, we don't have a gateway address, uh, so it's been masked by the router. If you have a wired one, you'll probably get a gateway address. Um, if you don't have a gateway address, just put none listed. So, because not everybody will do it. I designed this for the lab, and the lab I specifically designed to show a gateway address. So that way we know where our packets are going. But um, at home, I try to mask as much as possible. So, you can answer, what is the gateway address? We don't have that information. What is the source address? Okay, so according to Ethernet 2 standards, the source address is this address right here. And this is the layer one address, and um, or layer two, sorry. This is our layer two address, and this is the MAC address for our NIC card. And we know that the first three parts of the MAC address is the manufacturer, and the last three is the serial number. And so if we look here, it translates this into the manufacturer, which is Megawell, and then the serial number. So then it tells us the real number. This is Megawell's serial number. And people say, hey, you know, how did people figure out what my username and password is? Well, here, I already know what your router is, or what your NIC card address is. Um, looking for the router is a different mechanism, but it's very similar. And I can look up your, just Google, what's the default username and address, or are there any security vulnerabilities on this particular NIC card? And you can run various tools to use those vulnerabilities to access somebody's uh, uh, internet. Uh, by the way, these things are illegal unless you're doing it for fun, in your own home, with your own equipment. So please don't do that. That's why I like to have our lab available to us so that way we can play with some of these things and we're not getting anybody into trouble. All right. So we've answered questions two and three. All right. So our next item is confirm the source address by using the source address. So here we got... Um, we can look up our own source address by typing command and we do IP config and it tells us our address that we're using is 192.168.0.176 which means we're on this side of the router it is not our public address and because we are on this side of the router this is what we're seeing as a source uh, you can put something in between the router and your ISP so you can monitor those. Um, just don't do that. Your ISPs don't like that when you uh, disrupt their traffic. All right. So now when we go to IPv4 right here, IPv4, we can see that the source address is correct and our destination address is listed in that packet. All right. Now, we want to go back to the HTTP filter. So go back to here and do HTTP. And we're looking for the get, which is this very first one, 11113. Verify the packet is still Ethernet 2 and IPv4. Yes, it's Ethernet 2, it's IPv4. And then expand the HTTP section, which is down here. And we expand that. And it tells us right there what website that person is visiting. And so there's a thing called promiscuous mode, um, which I'd show you in the lab, but I will not show you here. Because, but promiscuous mode is where you can see every packet that every PC that's sharing that network is sending and receiving. And so it's kind of cool when we do this in class because people can see, oh, this guy went to Fox News, this guy went to CNN, and this guy went to some porn site, and blah, 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 blah. So um, since you can't do that, but at least you can see, hey, if I look at these different get packets, it tells me where these are going. All right, so now 
uh, you can answer delivery. Oops, sorry, we're on still number six. And we skip that. So we want to see what ports. So the source port we're doing is in TCP. My port for outside internet is some made up port on the high end of the spectrum. Um, I change that all the time um, because paranoia only exists if they really aren't out to get you. But the destination port, they're using the standard uh, TCP of like, port 80. 80 is always um, your outside port for most uh, services for HTTP or, or TCP. Um, however, it's never a good idea to keep that on port 80 because that's what all the hackers scan for to collect information. All right. So we've done that step. So number six, what is the source port? Source port is 55282. What is the destination port? It's port 80. Okay. So we shrink that back down and we go to HTTP. And now we answer question eight. In question eight, it says record the following information. What's the host? Well, the host is rgren.net. Don't worry about these uh, switches here. What's the connection? The connection is keep this connection alive. Uh, sometimes connections have a limited time, but because it's a shopping site, they want to keep the connection alive. What's the user agent? There's the user agent. I'm using Mozilla Firefox. I'm using Windows 10. Uh, it's a 64-bit. See how much information this tells you? Um, at the other end, they're also using um, information. So this is all me. So if I was monitoring somebody else's packets, I could tell what browser they were using, what when, what PC type, what operating system, whether they're 32-bit um, or 64-bit, um, what version. Um, and those versions are important because I can do a Google search and say what security flaws are in version, you know, 81 is the most newest one, so there's probably none yet. But let's say the guy hadn't updated Firefox in a while and he was using version 52, which was, you know, probably only about six months ago. And, uh, yeah, there'll be all kinds of exploits for that. So you, this tells you everything you need to know about the user's PC that you need to gain access to it. <clears throat> Again, don't do this. It's illegal unless we're doing it in a classroom environment. All right. Or you can use your own equipment in your own home using your own router separated from the ISP. All right. As Professor Sturdivant says, do these things that Matt tells you uh, with a great deal of care because she has no money for bail. Okay. And then our other information is who referred. And so you can look for sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so there's the user agent. There's the host. And I don't see a referral. Um, that usually shows up if you're using Edge or Google, but I don't see it. If you don't have a refer, then you just say, hey, does not show up, and you just let it go. Don't worry about it. Just answer the question is not present. And what you're looking for here is what is the HTTP response? Okay, so here's our response because this is our HTTP, it's the OK, it is coming back to us. And so here's our HTTP response, the first of 63. As you know from your reading, uh, an HTTP packet has a kill date. Uh, it'll transmit 63 times, or it'll hop 63 times, and then it'll die. That's what this is saying. So this is our HTTP response. Um, the connection status. So we can see the connection is still keep alive. That's important. Um, you can look at the frame number. This is a response to frame number. Oh, this is a response to 1191, um, which is this packet up here. So it says get this, and then this was the OK. So we are responding. This is the HTTP response to the request in frame 191. So this is what RPC sent, and you can see here the source, this is RPC, 
This is the destination, and this is from the destination to our PC saying, hey, we got your request. All right, so the next request in the frame is going to be 1253. So you can see here that the next one is, hey, get the images. And then the next response after that is 1296, and that is the response to that one. All right. Hopefully this fades together okay. Uh, where were we at? Uh, okay, we were working on HTTP 1.1. Um, oh, we we're on answering question number nine. So anyway, so here is, um, you can see here that we have our HTTP response. So we know um, where our response comes from. Uh, the, the item, the request is there. So we, we have the request in 1191. We have the response in 1244. Um, so that way we can follow this path of the packets handshaking back and forth and talking back and forth. And we also know that which part of the website was requesting information from our PC. And so you want to know what the next request is and what the next response is. Actually, that's a re relatively recent. It should be just next re request. I wouldn't show the next response. But so you can look at any one of these packets that, and get so much information about the user that is requesting information and the system that is delivering information and you can do it from both ends of the packet you can do it from the request from the get or the okay and this is what makes uh, it and anybody who's taken kiever would understand every time i say there is no ethics in it because people are sending out this information for me to look at anytime i want um that's not an ethical dilemma. That's somebody like screaming their bank account in a crowded mall. Not that there's crowded malls anymore, but you know what I mean? In a bar and they start screaming out their uh, uh, bank account information. None of this is secret. You can look this up all day long. Um, and uh, there's different protocols. I mean, there's a reason we use this site that has no security on it, but uh, going to the next level of retrieving information is not that hard. So I'm not going to go into it in this class because it's beyond the scope of what I'm trying to teach you. But in the security class, hopefully Chelly uh, shows you more on how to do Wireshark. And that's it for this lab. I'm sorry for the interruption. I have contractors working on a garage and they needed some help. Um, but we got it resolved. So thank you very much and have a good day.